Hello everyone, I'm Chris Hernandez and this is the Weekly Report, your look at news from the City of Kansas City, Missouri. The awards keep coming for the city and one of our own graphic designers right here in the City Communications Office, Karen Dougherty, has been recognized as a merit winner from How Magazine for her Cycle in the City campaign. The project was one of only 88 nationwide to be honored for in-house work for a corporation, association or organization. The winter edition of How Magazine will feature the award winners. It's now easier than ever for small business to contract with the city thanks to a new partnership with Lead Bank and the Cornerstone Companies. The city kicked off the For Change initiative to make the process easier. The program helps provide loans to small business owners who have city contracts and provides the required bonding and insurance at reduced rates. The program also streamlines the application process and provides lower than standard market rates for insurance and borrowing. Be on the lookout for the newest streetscape improvements along 20th Street in the crossroads. The $3.8 million project brings improvements for pedestrians, bicyclists and motorists alike. So let's take a closer look at that project as well as other city news. As he mentioned, we took a six lane road and made it a three lane road with bicycles, uh, bicycle lanes wider pedestrian pathways, green infrastructure, best management practices, all of those things that you look for in a complete 21st or 22nd century street. It has it here right here on 20th Street. So my hat's off to the team that put this together on time and on budget. Thank you. Thank you, Councilman Shields. My name is Jolie Justice, also representing the 4th District, and I have learned in my short time as a city council person that my favorite thing to do is to have a community association or a public works show us a picture of something that they're going to make happen <laughs> and then stand here to enjoy the actual hard work of the men and women who, who made this possible. So I want to thank the Crossroads Community Association for working with um, all of us here at City Hall. I want to thank the Public Works Department for your amazing um, job on this. this this is, is phenomenal, working with our contractors to get it done. And I look forward to continuing this wonderful success throughout the crossroads in the entire city. Thank you very much. It'll be uh, less than 15 minutes. We'll want to come inside. If you have a basement, we we'll want to check there. It's usually where we'll find some connections that may be of, of interest, like a sump pump. I think everybody should do it and see what they find out. Maybe they have an issue in their own home that they don't even know about and this is a good way to find it out without it being a charge to you. Hi, I'm Janet O'Hagan with Kansas City Convention and Entertainment Facilities, here to give you a glimpse of some of the upcoming events taking place at your Kansas City facilities. Live from Broadway, The Illusionist will perform at the Music Hall November 15th through November 20th. A show for audiences of all ages, this mind-blowing spectacular showcases the jaw-dropping talents of seven of the most incredible illusionists on earth with the most outrageous and astonishing acts ever to be seen on stage. The show is packed with stunning acts of magic such as grand illusion, levitation, and mind reading, as well as a full view underwater escape. For ticket information and show times, go to Ticketmaster.com. The 37th Annual Gear for Sports Warehouse 
will be held for the first time at the Exhibition Hall at Municipal Auditorium from November 15th through November 20th. Free and open to the public, the warehouse sale features Famous Maker Sports Gear at 80% off retail prices. For additional information, go to gearforsports.com. Car enthusiasts, listen up. Stop by the city's Barta Hall from December 1st through December 3rd for the Meekum High Performance December Auction, where you can buy, sell, or view 750 collector cars. Meekum Auction is the world leader in live auctions of collector cars, classic cars, Corvettes, hot rods, street rods, and muscle cars. For more information, visit Meekum.com. The Book of Mormon comes to the Music Hall December 6th through December 11th. Winner of nine Tony Awards, including Best Musical, this outrageous tour de force follows the adventures of a mismatched pair of missionaries sent halfway across the world to spread the good word. This is not for younger audiences, as it contains explicit language. For tickets, go to the municipal box office or visit Ticketmaster.com. To learn more about events taking place at Kansas City's convention and entertainment facilities, visit kcconvention.com and click on the events calendar or call 816-513-5000. 18th century Baroque composer Johann Sebastian Bach was the inspiration for the founding of Bach Aria Soloists, a local organization that has been around for 17 years and whose current season is supported by the Neighborhood Tourist Development Fund. Here to talk to us about the current season and a little bit more about the organization is Bach Aria Soloist founder, artistic director, and violinist, Elizabeth So Lane. Elizabeth, thank you for taking time to talk to us about your current season and about your organization. You're so welcome, Consuela. So happy to be here. Now, what was it about Bach who inspired you and impacted you in such a great way that you wanted to share it with others? And how are you um, connecting an 18th century composer with contemporary musicians and different art disciplines and musical genres? Thank you for that question. <laughs> well, of course, Bach is the greatest composer in Western music. And everybody from the other great composers who came after him all feel that way about him and he, his music has always spoken to me. Um, it's, it's the most sacred, the most brilliant, uh, the most incredible and virtuosic music that an instrumentalist can hope to play. So we're all really, we feel so blessed to be centering our mission around him. But then as you said, um, there are so many people who are inspired by him and including all of us. And so what I love is multi-genre collaboration. For example, we've worked with contemporary dancers, um, who've made original choreography to his great music because all of his music is so dance-like. And um, his music has, has inspired, of course, other composers. We've, we've combined with actors. And um, I, I do a wonderful educational piece with an, um, he's actually an illustrator in town, Shane Evans. Mm -hmm. um, but he does the role of acting for a, a really famous story. Um, and we combine the music of Bach with, uh, with, again, like I said, with prose, poetry, dance, um, artists, scholars. We brought uh, Christoph Wolf, who is known as the world's greatest scholar of Bach, to Kansas City here at the library to do our, a concert presenting the genius of Bach with the music of Bach. Mm -hmm. Well, and you, you mentioned coming to the library and performing here. You have yes. an upcoming performance here yes. on November 12th, which is a Saturday. Right. That's free. Right. Um, can you tell us about that? It's called right. Notes and Letters. That's right, Notes and Letters, where we are combining prose, great prose, and um, great music. And it's actually very pertinent because we've selected um, about five composers, and um, we've done a lot of research to find the letters 
by these composers, mm. and there are a couple to the composers and about the composer, but just to give the audience a little more perspective, it, uh, we, of course we hear their wonderful art through their music, but through the letters they get to hear a little bit more about the person, maybe the context, the situation, and, and you really see what a workaholic Bach was and the circumstances he was dealing with his entire life and with the, with the multiple tasks that he was assigned in his position in Leipzig. Um, and then, you know, Scarlatti, there are letters from him about his son, but also letters about him from Chopin, talking about mm. uh, Scarlatti, he's the greatest composer, and, you know, things like that. And then we have, uh, you know, it was interesting, Handel, I couldn't find that much on Handel, but I did find letters that he wrote, but they were all to specific um, employers. So it was all very formal and, and th th that's a kind of fascinating thing, all of the handwritten letters, you know, to their employers, with Bach as well, from Mozart as well, um, they have to be so humbling and, you know, they, it's mostly to royalty or mm -hmm. sometimes it's to the church, mm -hmm. sometimes it's to the court and um, it's just so interesting how they have to be, they call themselves your affectionate servant. I'm serving you for the for my entire life and things like that. You know, it's just so different mm -hmm. from now. And and Mozart's letters, there are many, and it, it's you know his letters are so beautiful because they're not just to employers; they're to his father, they're to his sister, they're to his wife, they're about his wife. And so we really get to learn about Mozart, the passionate person. Mm -hmm. So very personal stories. Yes, and the concert is free. Yes. Um, so so people just have to register at our website mm -hmm. BachAriaSoloist.com in order to. Um, have a seat. Okay, and it fills up quickly, so... Very quickly, yeah. <laughs> yes. So go ahead and go to the website today. All right, you heard it. Sign up soon. Well, thank you so much for taking time to talk to us today and for all that you do and for being such wonderful ambassadors of Kansas City throughout the world. Well, thank you so much, Consuelo. I really appreciate it. The Neighborhood Tourist Development Fund supports local nonprofits that bring cultural, social, educational, and recreational activities to our area. about additional upcoming events, visit kcmo.gov slash ntdf. Motorcycles are out and about more often during the warmer months and the Kansas City, Missouri Police Department wants to remind motorists to share the road and to be extra alert to help keep motorcyclists safe. Although motorcyclists have all the same rights and privileges as any car driver on the roadway, sometimes it doesn't always occur. Research shows that in one half of all motorcycle crashes, another type of motor vehicle is also involved. Captain Darrell Berquist of the Traffic Enforcement Division. Motorcycles are a lot less visible than cars. Uh, just for nothing more than just the mass of the vehicle. Cars are obviously a lot bigger than motorcycles. Um, they're also hidden in blind spots a lot more around other vehicles. They're, they can be blocked, so if they're passing on the left and somebody at a stop sign is not going to have a visual on that motorcycle where normally a car or a truck they would. I also think that um, the margin of error on a motorcycle is a lot smaller than it would be in a vehicle. Uh, a different vehicle like a car or truck in which you can just slam on your brakes and that's one of the only things that you need to do aside from steering. On a motorcycle, 
uh, it's very dangerous just to slam on the brake. If you just slam on your rear brake, you're going to you're going to go down and cause an accident with yourself, whether you hit somebody or not. You have to do things like your front brake, uh, rear brake. There's downshifting, and you have to do them in sequential order and maintain control of the vehicle. And uh, uh, if you don't, it could be serious consequences. Cars and motorcycles require a full lane to operate and maneuver safely. Do not share a lane with an automobile or another motorcycle. Allow three or four seconds when following a motorcycle so the motorcyclist has enough time to maneuver or stop in an emergency. And don't forget to use your mirrors. Times are fascinated by motorcycles and they want to turn and look and watch. Um, I understand that, but that's also very dangerous because not only are you not paying attention to the to the situation with the motorcycle but you also have cars in front of you so if you're focused too much on the motorcycle then you will lose sight of the vehicle in front and if they have to stop you could rear in that vehicle so it's very important to utilize your mirrors if you do see a motorcycle understand and remember the mirrors say they're closer than they appear the objects are closer than they appear so just maintain uh, your proper speed maintain your lane uh, be very cognizant of the motorcycle be very careful but more, more importantly don't get tunnel vision just on that motorcycle be aware of your other surroundings um, anticipate obstacles Road conditions that are minor annoyances to a regular vehicle pose major hazards to motorcyclists. Motorcyclists may change speed or adjust their position within a lane suddenly in reaction to potholes, gravel, wet or slippery surfaces, railroad crossings, and grooved pavement. They shouldn't ride in the middle of the lane. That sounds kind of crazy, but uh, over the course of time, um, cars drop oil and in the center of a lane there's an oil streak on pretty much every roadway which becomes very slick especially if there's any sort of moisture uh, or, or severe humidity uh, ice snow things like that so um, they, they will offset to one side of the lane or other and that's a safety reason um, the other thing is it is very dangerous if you have loose gravel or sand uh, water, uh, things like that, it's very dangerous. So you'll see a motorcycle often go like this to avoid objects. Now ultimately their goal is to stay in that lane, uh, but there may, a, may be a situation just like with a vehicle where they have to make a sudden lane change. So you should always be aware of those circumstances and they could happen at any time. Motorcycle riders must also be just as aware of cars. The single most important safety device a motorcyclist can have is a helmet. In Missouri, it is illegal to ride without a helmet. Motorcyclists are very, very susceptible and unprotected on the, on the motorcycle, so they need to not only wear their helmets, uh, they need to wear gloves to protect their hands, um, boots that go above the ankles so they don't roll their ankles, uh, protective leather gear. And one thing that is, is real important that often gets overlooked is eyewear, uh, because we've all had rock chips on our windshield, and you'll see that if a rock chip can crack a windshield, can you imagine what it would do to your eye? and it just takes one small pellet uh, to cause permanent damage to your eye. <coughs> excuse me, to your eye. Um, so that's very important as well. But, but uh, motorcycle helmets absolutely should be worn. And most of all, stay sober. Studies have shown that 40 to 45% of all fatal motorcycle crashes involve the use of alcohol and get proper training. Research has shown that more than 90% of all riders involved in crashes were either self-taught or taught by friends. I'm Sergeant Matt Fisher. Have a safe week. The Jazz at the Gem series continues with Kansas City's own Bobby Watson and the American Jazz Orchestra. Experience the smooth sounds of this 18-piece orchestra with vocalist Ernie Andrews on Saturday, November 19th at 8 p.m. For tickets, call 474-6262 or go to Ticketmaster.com. The city's fall curbside leaf and brush pickup is underway with collection in the North Zone the week of November 14th through 19th. Then, if you missed the first round of pickups in your area, or you have more leaves, we'll have a second phase of collection, and that starts soon. The North Zone pickup begins the week of November 30th, second collection in the South Zone runs the week of December 7th, and Central Zone collection starts December 14th. Remember, you may leave up to 20 bags or bundles of leaves and brush at the curb on your regular trash day. The city's leaf and brush drop-off sites are also now open. The sites are located at 11660 North Main, 1815 North Shoto Trafficway, 
and 10301 Raytown Road. Drop-off is free to residents on Saturdays with identification. For more information about Leaf & Brush, visit kcmo.gov and search Leaf & Brush. Due to the Veterans Day holiday on Friday, November 11th, trash pickup for residents whose regular trash day is on that Friday will have their trash picked up the next day on Saturday, November 12th. That does it for this edition of the Weekly Report. To view this program again or other Channel 2 videos, just go to kcmo.gov and search Channel 2. That page has a link to our YouTube channel and you can view our programs on demand. Thanks for watching. I'm Chris Hernandez. Have a great week.